All right, so when is sampling used? So obviously we know um, that as auditors we cannot look at 100% of the items. And so we have to make uh, a, a sample selection. So we have to s select items that we want to look at. And there are numerous ways that you can do that. But you want to perform that sampling selection so that the sample is representative of the population. You want to reduce your risk that you're going to uh, not that you won't select those items that are more problematic, right? Or that you miss something, right? Because remember, there is going to be this risk that we don't catch something because we're not looking at 100% of the items. So we're trying to minimize that. Right? So with sampling, you know that exact information is not needed because if you need exact information, right, you're going to have to look at 100% of the items. Not possible in an audit. You can't possibly do that. You know that there are large populations, right? Large amounts of transactions. A company, you take a company the size of IBM or Microsoft. Just imagine the amount of transactions that are flowing through there. So how do we, as auditors, uh, get a handle on that and select a, a representative sample? By doing that, what you're trading off on is effectiveness for efficiency, right? Because sample, sampling is more efficient. Right, that we can't look at 100% of the items, and you have a, a, a constrained time period in which you can audit. Right? You're, you can't sit at your client for 365 days of the year. Doesn't happen. So you're trading off the effectiveness of looking at a lot more items for efficiency to looking to focusing on a fewer fewer items. So with um, sampling and auditing. We look at sampling to test compliance with internal controls. That's the test of control. So we're going to sample, say for example, select a, a sample. Remember when we were talking about the assertions over the sales and collection cycle, I would use the term select a sample of sales from the sales journal and tie those back to shipping to test occurrence. Right? So that's what we mean. We're going to select, select from a larger population and perform uh, the test on those. So if we're looking at, um, let's say for example, we talked about the acquisition cycle last uh, class, right? If we want to see the, that all disbursements are supported by uh, the appropriate documentation, if there's a three-way match, we go to the cash disbursements journal, select a sample of cash disbursements, and then ensure that those cash disbursements have a purchase order, a receiving report, and a vendor invoice. That's a test of controls, right? So that's one way we use sampling, and that's what we call attribute sampling. So we're looking for the attributes indicative of those controls. So in that example, the attribute that we're looking at are vendor invoice, purchase order, receiving report. Those are the attributes that a cash disbursement should have with respect to controls over cash disbursement. We also have substantive procedures that we perform. And that's those procedures that we're performing on account balances. Not transactions, not controls, but on account balances. And so we're selecting components of that tra those transactions or account balances uh, for verification. And that's what we call variable sampling. Right? So the, the, the two chapters that you have in your text covers the, just a general overview of sampling and then attribute sampling. And what I'm going to provide you with uh, on the internet is a discussion of variable sampling. So let's just talk about 